Hey there! Today we're going to be talking about exoplanets. If you look up at the night sky, what do you see? Stars, planets, maybe a smidge of the Milky Way if you're lucky, but probably no aliens. Why is that? Astronomers across the world have asked the same question for thousands of years, and they've found a way to search for them. This is by looking for exoplanets. An exoplanet is any planet outside of our solar system. Most orbit other stars, but free-floating exoplanets, called rogue planets, are untethered to any star. The search for aliens starts here, because, much like humans, aliens need a place to live, or at least a place of origin. Studying the diverse range of exoplanets and planetary systems that have been discovered to date, from the small to the large, from those that appear Earth-like to the profoundly bizarre, can help us understand both aliens and ourselves. Now that there's a purpose for studying exoplanets, how do scientists search for them? They use three main methods that do not rely on exact measurements from telescope. Wobble, transit, and Doppler shift. I started by using the NASA Exoplanet Database that uses their missions to space to teach people about exoplanets. Due to NASA's experience with spacefaring adventures, their database was very reliable for the information that I needed. The many sections for this database include how NASA missions search for exoplanets, several ways to find an exoplanet, and graphs of the data collected. First, let's talk about the wobble method. Fundamentally, a star's enormous gravitational influence keeps its planetary family in orbit. But gravity works both ways. As the planets sweep around in their orbits, they tug on their parent stars to and fro, causing those stars to wobble. All planets do this to some extent. Except in extremely rare cases, we don't actually ever get to see the stars wibble and wobble back and forth under the gravitational suggestion of their exoplanets. But we can see the light from those stars, and moving objects will shift their light. So even though we can't see the star in motion, we can detect the tiny change in its light pattern as the planet causes it to swing closer and further from us. This method works best when a planet is directly along our line of sight, but it can also give a detectable signal when it's not perfectly aligned. Second, let's talk about the transit method. The transit method is intuitively one of the simplest ways to search for exoplanets. How much a star dims during a transit directly relates to the relative sizes of the star and the planet. A small planet transiting a large star will create only a slight dimmit, while a large planet transiting a small star will have a more noticeable effect. As the planet transits in front of the star, it will block out small amounts of the star's light. That means that a star will look darker when a planet passes in front of it. Astronomers can observe how the brightness of a star changes during transit. Transits are viewed as minute dips in light measurement of a star. Third, let's talk about the Doppler shift method, which is very closely related to the radial velocity or wobble method. Stars and planets gravitationally attract one another, causing them to orbit. The same is true for light waves. When an object moves towards something, the light waves reach it faster than if the object was moving away from it. The object's spectrum is classified as blue shifted since the waves are bunched together and the color blue has the shortest wavelength in the visible spectrum. An object's spectrum is said to be redshifted when an object is moving away from us. Scientists measure the shift of the stars and can determine whether there are exoplanets in the vicinity. In astronomy, Doppler shifts occur as a star orbits around its own center of mass and moves toward or away from Earth. These wavelength shifts can be seen in the form of subtle changes in its spectrum, the rainbow of colors emitted in light. When a star moves towards us, its wavelengths get compressed, and its spectrum becomes sp slightly bluer. When a star moves away from us, its spectrum looks slightly redder. This means that there is an exoplanet affecting the star's Doppler shift, and that it could be for further explored. Observing exoplanets allows us to determine whether or not we actually understand the processes that created worlds and galaxies, even in our own solar system. In fact, We've seen so far that most solar systems don't look like ours. What finding exoplanets does for us is open up a vast exploration area to look for other habitable worlds. And it has upped the likelihood that we are not alone. In the words of Toran Lee Diwar, we humans believe we know it all. 
when you begin to think about the vastness of the universe, you will begin to realize that we know nothing other than the limitations of our own environment. Thank you. That's all I have for you today. And I hope to see you in another video.